Amen. It's a privilege to be in the Lord's house. Amen. I'm so thankful for your pastor, um, not just because he got us to preach this morning and uh, trusted us with you in his absence, but I'm telling you, he's a man of God that I look up to and I respect him. And the older I get, the more I find that I, I, I appreciate my elders more and more because they've been through some things that I haven't been through yet. And they've been to some places that I, I want to get there, but they've got there and they've only got there through prayer. Amen. I appreciate our elders. I'm not saying Brother Andrew's old, so y'all don't go back and tell him anything that I didn't say. Somebody say amen. 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 Luke chapter 4, verse 17. If you have it, would you say amen? Amen. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, and to preach deliverance to the captives, and the recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book and gave it again to the minister and sat down. And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began to say unto them, This day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. John chapter 8, verse 31. Amen. If you want to flip over there real quick. Thank you. John chapter 8, verse 31. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And they answered him, We being Abraham's seed, and were never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, ye shall be made free? Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever committeth sin is the servant of sin. And the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth forever. If the son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. Amen. Can we say that together? If the son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. Amen. I want to preach on let freedom ring this morning. Let freedom ring. Would you stretch your hands toward heaven? Ask the Lord to touch us right here, Lord. We come before you asking you, Lord, for the anointing power of the Holy Ghost, that you would touch every heart, touch every life, convict the sinner, Lord. Would you use me as an instrument for your mercy, God, for your grace? Hide me behind the cross that I could be used for you. God, we ask you to touch and move, edify the body of Christ. And we give you the praise and the glory for everything that's done. And the church said, Amen. 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 If, if the Son, therefore, shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. Now, I love looking at history and seeing what history has given us. Um, I don't know about you, but I, I love observing history. And I know that in our schools, they're trying to take it out of our history books but I believe it's important for our young people to understand that, that, the, the, that there were God-fearing, Bible-believing people that actually settled this country, and they fought and they bled for our freedom to worship. Somebody say amen right there. The Revolutionary War took place from 1776 to 1783, and we see that brave men fought for our independence from England. But on July the 4th, 1776, the Second Continental Congress signed the Declaration of Our Independence as a pronouncement of our choice for liberty over tyranny. It was signed by 56 men from 13 colonies, and those men lost houses and lands and families and friends for the cause of freedom and religious liberty. But we look at, this, at the history books, and we find that our own country united in this effort called democracy. They were fighting for freedom. I don't know about you, but I'm thankful for the freedom to come to God's house whenever I want to. I'm thankful for the freedom to be able to be in God's house. But we see this, this taking place. They're trying to fight against tyranny, 
and religious oppression. But 86 years, just short years after being united by the war, we find our, our country divided by our, our little country. Somewhat has grown a little bit. But at this time, it, it's beginning to be embroiled in chaos and divided again by the Civil War. It has brother fighting against brother, son fighting against son. Come on now. It has father fighting against son. But in 1863, on January the 1st, Abraham Lincoln signs into law the Emancipation Proclamation. And doing that, he frees between three and a half to four million slaves in our country. I'm thankful for a man that will stand up for what's right, even though it's not popular. Amen. But thousands of years prior to this Emancipation Proclamation taking place, we can read in Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, that God begins to create a planet. And he puts two individuals inside that planet. And he made a perfect place for them to live. He created something that they did not have to plant something to be able to eat. They did not have to go pull their own water. They had everything that they needed right there at their fingertips to satisfy their physical needs. And God saw that he would have a relationship with them. And so in the cool of the day, God would come down and would begin to talk with them and deal with them in the middle of the day. But we find here in Genesis that there's a serpent that slithers his way into that garden, that perfect place that God had created for this man and woman to reside in. But this serpent begins to slyly and cunningly begin to supplant and lie to them. Come on now. We know that's what the devil does. He tries to lie to us. Come on. He'll try and tell you that, that God didn't really say that's what he said. That's not what God really meant. Praise the Lord. He didn't really mean that when he said not to eat of this tree of good and evil. But he said that God knew you would become a God. That's what the devil likes to do. He'll never tell you an outright lie. But he'll always twist the truth and make it seem like there's something different in it than what God intended. Come on now. Amen. We begin to see here. He begins to lie and to beguile this wonderful woman that God could create. That that God had created and he convinces her just to taste the forbidden fruit. And when she did, she took of it, the Bible tells us, and she did eat, and she gave also to her husband, and he did eat. And thereby, that one little lie that he told there, he forever captivates her free will, and her eyes are immediately opened, and she begins to understand some things that we were not meant to understand. He confines her and all of her will. He confines the entire human race to what we call the Adamic nature. That nature on the inside of us. All of us were born this way. All of us were born in sin and shaped in iniquity. Romans chapter 5 verse 12 said, Wherefore as by one man sin entered into the world and death by sin, so death passed upon all men. For that all have sinned. For all have sinned. Romans chapter 3 verse 23. And come short of the glory of God. The psalmist said in Psalm 51 in verse 5. Behold I was shapen in iniquity. And in sin did my mother conceive me. We can look around us in the world that we live in. We can see the news or read the newspaper. You can turn on social media and begin to scroll and you can see the sinful depravity that our world is taken in. There's unsatiated lust, unfulfilled lust all around us. People that are selfishly destructive. The Bible tells us that they were going to have... It, uh, things with themselves that would hurt them on selves because it fulfilled their own lust. That's what the Bible tells us. People have become morally bankrupt. 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 1, Paul tells him that perilous times would come. That people's minds would be corrupted and reprobate concerning the faith. Matthew chapter 24 verse 13. 
37 said, But as the days of Noah were, so also shall the coming of the Son of Man be. We can see that in Noah's day, there were men that were not living right. They were not doing right as according to God's law and God's plan for humanity. We can see that in their day and time that they were eating and drinking and making merry. They were doing what they wanted to do. The Bible tells us that in their minds were only evil continually. Their hearts were were turned against God. They were reprobate. And we find uh, this creation that's just been placed into confinement by sin, captivated and incarcerated and impotent. But we find in our in our moral society around us, we are seeming to find a new normal. Come on now. The brother said it this morning. They will be angry at you. They will stone you. They will kill you if you tell them the truth. We find a new normal. Homosexuality is something that's on the rise around us. Abortion, lying, stealing, fornication, adultery, murder, lust, drug addiction, pedophilia is filling not only the world, but it's creeping its way into the church house and it's becoming an accepted thing. But I tell you right now, this is not how God meant it to be. Psalm chapter 73, verse 2. The psalmist, one of the men that God said he was after his own heart, said, but as for me, my feet were almost gone. My steps had well nigh slipped. For I was envious of the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. For there are no bands in their death, but their strength is firm. They are not in trouble as other men. Neither are they plagued as other men. Therefore their pride compasseth them about as a change, and violence covered them as a garment. We can see in our political uh, world that we are living in that there is so much corruption that's taking place, and it seems like the wicked is succeeding. It seems like they are just pulling in money left and right, but we know that's not what it's all about. They said they're not in trouble as other men because people are so corrupt. We can see this in the world that we are surrounded by. But I'm telling you, this world that we were put into, God didn't leave us the way we were. Somebody say amen right there. The miracle isn't how I messed up, but the miracle is how I was able to get up. Somebody say amen. It's not how I was locked up, but how I got loose. Now there's people that want to look at us and they say, well, I've never made a mistake, Brother Chris. I've never messed up. I'm telling you, you're telling a story because the Bible says differently. Now they like to look at us down their self-righteous nose and they'll point that thing in the air when they walk by some of us and they think, oh man, they've messed up now. But I'm telling you, I'm not the only one that was born in sin and shaping in iniquity. I'm not the only one that has had struggles in my life. Somebody say amen. Amen. I'm not the only one that has faced temptation in my life. I've messed up a many a time. But I feel like preaching to you right here. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 11 said, And such were some of you, but ye are washed, ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. I'm telling you there's times in our life where we have to look around and realize that this world is messed up. Come on now. You can say amen to that. This world is messed up. Their systems are all wrong. The way that they put their value system and try to educate our children. Thank you, brother. It's all wrong. It's messed up. But I come to preach to you that something had to happen in humanity for God to let us be born in sin and shaping in iniquity. He had to give us a way out to get back to Him. And I come to preach to you that the ink of no pen, the proclamation of no president, the declaration of no democracy, the roar of no revolution, and the negotiation of no executive could ever pardon us from the sin that we had committed, that we had been born in. Nothing could free us from that sin that we had brought on ourselves, that we had committed, that Adam and Eve had placed us in. But I come to preach to you that down through the eons of time there was a plan that was set in place for the redemption of mankind 
the sovereign Savior from the eternal, uh, step the immortal and from the heavens, uh, step the hallowed from the sanctuary, step the sacred Savior, disrobing himself of royalty and clothing himself in humanity, came in just like a little baby and walked among us. Uh, and he made of himself no reputation, but came as one of us. Uh, and the Bible tells us that he was tempted like as we are, yet without sin. I said he went through the storms and the troubles uh, that I've been through. Uh, he went through the trials and the tests uh, that you've been through. Uh, but he came through it on the other side. Uh, victorious. Uh, so that I could be victorious. Uh, so that you could be victorious. Uh, and could be an overcomer in the end. Psalm chapter 68 in verse 6 said, He bringeth out those that are bound with chains. I'm glad He didn't leave me like I was. You can say amen right there. I'm glad that He didn't leave me lonely. I'm glad that He didn't leave me in my sin. I'm glad that He didn't leave me with a way to get back to Him. But He made a way that I could get back to the Father. Uh, we sing a song sometimes in this little red back hymnal that I love. I love this song. And I'm telling you, it might not mean much to a person that's never been bound. Or never realized that they were bound. But that little song goes like this. Once like a bird in prison I dwelled. No freedom from my sorrow I felt. But then Jesus came and he listened to me. And glory to God, he set me free. I don't know about you, but I have experienced that bondage. And there's a lot of people that sit on church pews uh, and say, you know what? I don't want to live the way you live because that's bondage. Uh, I come to tell you that the way I live is absolute freedom. Uh, I said I'm free to worship. Uh, I'm free to do what I want to do. Uh, I can smoke anytime I want to. But I don't want to. I can go to the worldly amusements anytime I want to. But I just don't want to. You see, because he's given me a freedom. He's changed my life in a way that's just simple to explain. He set me free. He set me free. Oh, hallelujah. Second Corinthians chapter 3 verse 17 said, Now the Lord is that spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Now, I don't know about you this morning, but I felt the presence of an Almighty God as He sat down here in this place this morning. And I'm telling you, the Bible clearly tells us that where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And if the Lord is here, He came to set somebody free so you don't have to go home the way you came. You don't have to carry that same burden that you came in here with. But He came to be the burden lifter, uh, the chain breaker, uh, the trial taker, uh, the God I serve uh, walked in this door this morning uh, so he could set you free uh, from the trial you're walking through, uh, the chain you're carrying, uh, the addiction you're fighting, uh, and the God I serve uh, is able uh, to set you free. Yeah. Isaiah chapter 10 verse 27. I love preaching the word of God. Because when the devil came to Jesus, he didn't give him his own opinion. Somebody say amen right there. But he turned the word of God right around on him and he used it against him. Isaiah chapter 10 verse 27. And it shall come to pass in that day that his burden shall be taken away from off thy shoulder and his yoke from off thy neck. And the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Come on now. It's not the talent that's in the singing that's going to break the yoke. It's not how good of a preacher someone is that's going to break the yoke. But it's the anointing of an old time preacher uh, that found his way to an altar somewhere. And that idea of an anointing that begins to break the no that yoke is a cattle that's been in the field. An oxen that's been in the field. And they would put that yoke on them. And the idea behind this scripture is that that, that that, that oxen or that cattle would begin to grow and it would grow so big that that oxen, that yoke would just break off of it and it would be destroyed and that oxen would be so big and so strong that the yoke would never be able to be reapplied to that oxen's life. Now I don't know about you, but when I read the scripture and I understand what he says about being full of the Holy Ghost. Now somebody that is 
that is empty is little and small and insignificant. But I'm telling you, somebody that stays a little while and they stay till they get full. And when they rise up, there's boldness of the Holy Ghost uh, on the inside of them. Uh, it'll change the way you walk. Uh, it'll change the way you talk. Uh, it'll change the way you worship. Uh, it'll change the way you witness. Uh, you won't be the same person uh, because you've got a testimony uh, that God has set you free uh, from some addiction. From some pains, from some chains that you have to deal with. God can set you free. He can set you free. We are living in a church age that I feel like there is more people in the hour that we live in that is bound by anxiety, that is bound by fear, that is bound by suicide, that is bound by depression. I'm telling you, there is so many people that are bound by condemnation from things that they struggled with in their past. Why is it so that you see a therapist's office on every corner? Why is it so that there are so many things? And don't get me wrong, I completely understand that people have things that they, they have to deal with. I'm not ignorant to the fact that we are living in a society that sin has ran rampant and it has done things to our bodies that God never intended it to do. But we are dealing with anxiety and depression and doubt and fear and condemnation. People are living in such a regretful state. They have so much regret for the things that they've done yesterday. I come to preach to you that I have heard of people and, and I heard a pastor tell this story and I love the way he put he brought it around. He said that there was a young man in his church that had prayed for years and years. He had he had worked with him and prayed for him and prayed with him. And for years and years he could get up to a certain point with God, but it seemed like there was a wall that was blocking him in that he couldn't go no further. And he began to ask him, he said, Son, what is the problem? What do you think is the problem? And if people really be honest with you, a lot of people know what the problem is in their life, but they just won't be honest enough to tell God because they're trying to hide something from Him. God sees everything in your life, and He knows what's going on, and He knows what the issues are. But this young man told his pastor, he said, Pastor, he said, I'm not sure exactly what it is. He said, but I feel like I can't get over those things that I committed before I came to God. And the Bible clearly tells us that if we ask Him, He's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. You see, a lot of people have problems getting over their past, but it's not because God has not forgiven them, but it's because you have not forgiven yourself, because God tells us that if we come to Him, He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins. Now you have to let it go and let God help you get over those things that have fought against you in your past. Romans chapter 8. Verse 1 said, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. I come to preach to you that God came this morning to let you know that you can be set free, that you do not have to go home in the same bondage that you came in. You do not have to go home under the same condemnation that you came in. You do not have to walk out these doors facing the same fear that you came in here fighting. You do not have to walk out those doors facing the same anxiety and depression that you came in here facing. But I come to tell you that where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And I'm no longer a slave to fear. I said I'm no longer afraid because perfect love casteth out all fear. He didn't say just a little bit of it. But when I give Him everything, He can take that fear he can take that doubt. Uh, he can take that anxiety. Uh, and He can make somebody uh, on the inside. Uh, he can make somebody uh, be a soldier for Jesus Christ. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I tell you, we are living in a fearful society. Our, 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 our society is wrapped up in so much violence, so much hate. We are living in a fearful society. But I'm no longer a slave to fear. You don't have to be a slave to fear. The devil wants you to worry with fear about the future. 
But there's a little children's song, Brother Chris, that we used to sing when I was just a little boy. He said, I've got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world. And that might seem just so small and just so insignificant to you. But I want you to realize that the God that I serve is so sovereign. He's so supernatural. He's so all-encompassing that the Bible tells us that He formed the oceans in the palm of His hand. Throne and the earth is his footstool. And I come to preach to you this morning that the trial you're facing, don't think you're by yourself because he made it for you to walk through it. I feel the God right there. Uh, I feel the God that created this planet wants to tell you that where you are, he knows exactly where you're at uh, because he made the trial uh, that you're walking through, uh, he made the circumstance uh, that you're facing. Uh, and when it's time for you to come out of it, uh, He's going to say it's over. And just like that, on the other side, you can look that it was the God of heaven that brought you out. It wants yourself. It wants your ability. It wants your capability. But it was the God that I serve that will bring you out on the other side. I come to preach to you this morning. I feel like there's some chains that need to fall off some people's lives. Some fear that people are facing uh, and they pray, God, I want to be free of them. Uh, and I come to preach to you this morning, you can be free. But I found, I, I grew up in holiness. I grew up in a good gospel, Bible-believing church. Brother Brown was my pastor for a long time. And I know you know him, so he's, he's a man of God that, that preaches the Word of God. And I've seen people and a lot of times, people's freedom has a hinge. You say, preacher, what, are, what in the world are you talking about? It hinges on one thing. Do you want to be free? Come on now. God has multitudes of freedom. Multitudes of help. The Bible tells us that we've got a great cloud of witnesses. And every single one of them have made it through. And they've come out the other side. And they've got a testimony. We've got elders that are here that I'm telling you we could go on for hours just telling about the things that God has brought them through. The chains that he's broken off of their life. The issues that they've had in their life. But I'm telling you, they didn't, got, they didn't get freedom of those things until they gave it to God. A lot of times people want to keep it in their own pocket. Because they want to say, I can handle it by myself. I come to tell you there ain't nothing that you can handle by yourself until you give it to God. There's times in my life where I face circumstances. And I, I'm just a young man. I'm only 28 years old. I know I'm going bald a little bit, but y'all don't hold that against me. But I'm just a young man. But in those young little 28 years, I've been through some struggles that I didn't know how I was going to make it. I didn't know how I was going to get on the other side of the trial that I was facing the fear and the anxiety that I was dealing with. But I come to tell you that there come a time in my life where I had to make a choice. Will I deal with this by myself or will I give it to God and let God hold it? There's some of you that your families are struggling with things. And Lord knows if we were to see it, we would be all so ashamed. But even in my own family, come on now. Let's not hold up our noses to each other because there's people, even in our own families, that are struggling with things. No one is no better than anybody else. But I'm telling you, the God of all creation has the ability to slide his hands right into the situation. And he can change things in the way that you're walking. As she comes, I'm getting ready to close. There's just a few little songs that I love singing. They're, there's, they're newer songs. But, but I love those songs. I hear the chains falling. And there's times in people's lives where they, they come to church and they, they pretend like everything's all right. We know how to do it, brother. We can, we can make a masquerade of, of great propensity. Uh, uh, just, just have the mask on and just, just put our hands up and worship like nothing's going wrong. But I come to preach to you that God sees what's on the inside of us. And he knows exactly what we're facing. But I come to tell you that there's times in your life that you're going to have to realize this problem is bigger than I am. This trial is bigger than I am. 
And I come to preach to you that God is the only one that can bring freedom to your life. God is the only one that can set your family free. God's the only one that can bring deliverance from that trial, from that doubt, from that fear, from that anxiety. There's brothers and sisters in the Lord that can help. But until you give it to God, God can make a difference in your life. I declare freedom for my family. I don't know about you this morning, but I see families all across this house. And I don't know about you, but I want freedom in my family. I want my family to be free to worship. I want my family to be able to come to God's house together in a family unit, in unity, and be able to worship together. And I don't know about you, but I face those times in my life where I had to stand up like the brother said. I had to give myself to God, submit myself to God, rebuke the devil, and watch him flee from my family. Because families aren't always perfect. Every one of us has something that in our family, we're not always perfect. There's attitudes, there's actions that take place and they'll try to creep in. But I'm telling you, God came here this morning to tell you that you can be free if you want to be. If you want to be. It's up to you. Will you ask Him for freedom? Because He's willing to give it. He was already here this morning. And if you want to be free, you can be free. Brother, I don't know how y'all do it. But is it all right if we just have an altar call right here? And we just gather in these altars and ask the Lord to set some people free? Because I know that with a church this full, there's got to be some people that are struggling that are dealing with some things. And I come to tell you that God came this morning to let you know that you can be free. You don't have to go home the same way that you came.